lot of times when you know um, younger attorneys come to the music industry, they're coming in like anything, you know, um, you are very book knowledge great. You're coming in, you probably, you know, you're still thinking A, B, and C's and getting grades and doing well. And it's a different thing. It's not so much just how smart you are in terms of what you know. It's about who you know. And, and, and knowing those relationships and knowing how uh, you might have this kind of client and, um, and this relationship to this client. Um, Knowing that client's relation, that client's situation, I'll give you a good example. Uh, when I was doing uh, consulting, I was back in Chicago. I was working with a, uh, a lawyer friend of mine, eventually became friends. But when she didn't know me, she uh, she sent me. Uh, I was consulting this client. I wasn't the lawyer. I was the consultant. And she sent me like a big red uh, red uh, 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 a red line. Agreement of everything of you know, what she wanted, you know, points. So the client looked at this and it's like, you know, to the, it's a little overwhelming when you look at a red line agreement because you just see all these marks. And I'm like, and I'm explaining to the client that that don't mean nothing. This is just part of negotiation. This is part of the conversation. It's just really helping the client understand that, you know, all, some of these things may not even be a, a deal breaker point. It might be thrown out the window after. But, you know, she really kind of like made the client feel uncomfortable about the whole thing. And like, you know, that's not what you want to do. You don't want to make them feel uncomfortable. You want to make them understand exactly what this was. So I went into a situation that by me knowing how to read contracts, I was able to pretty much dissect a bunch of this stuff and go, you know what, a lot of this that you're trying to do is really more so for lawyers to suggest. Let's take it to a deal memo. And let's just get to the main points. Because that's really what the harvest they want to know. They don't really want to be discussing all this. So sometimes lawyers can get a little caught up in what they do. You get what kind of client they're working with. That client didn't know nothing about no legal. Now, you know, you just see a lot of red lines. You know, so you, you get intimidated. And you, you know, and a lot of times that's what makes people be scared of lawyers. Because they're not really coming at it like understanding who they're representing understanding the relationship on the table and it goes back to his point and also we're trying to close a deal um, the difference between negotiating a management deal is way different from negotiating a production deal or a record deal um, the manager and the artist got to work together you don't want them to be at war <laughs> with each other you just want them to come to some clear-cut agreements on what the terms are going to be moving forward and that make them understand this person has his best interest in heart. They want to work together. Um, you still want to you know, always remember that that's what your client is going to be working with these people after you negotiate this. And you got to understand the difference between negotiating a client, a first-time client going in versus a client that's been there for You know, a client going in is going to be a little bit, it's got to give up some things. You got to help them understand what they got to give up. They're not going to get every point, you know, and help them understand that, help them understand what the situation is. And if they get in and they do their job and they accomplish some of these things, those other things will come into play. Um, I help them understand the relationship that's across the table uh, so that they can, uh, they can understand how important that relationship is and they don't go into this thing just totally thinking this in, in my philosophy of business. And, um, I just don't, I, if it ain't no money on this table, ain't no business on the table. I always tell people, for me, going into this thing, I got this, the way I look at everything is, everything is social. Then it moves to the professional. And if we get cool, then it can move to the personal. But it goes in that order for me. It starts with the social, then it goes to the professional, then it goes to the personal. Sometimes people come in and they get business minded and too professional and too, and you can't do that in the music industry. If I don't know you or he ain't comfortable with you or whatever the case may be, it's gonna slow up business because people are already, you know, it's, people are already nervous. You know what I'm saying? So try to make them as comfortable as possible. I think Kevin brings up a, a, a great point on the importance of understanding the relationship between the client and the artist. 
say to y'all, it's very important to get into the music environment while you're in school now, not just focusing on getting in with a music lawyer, but just getting in a music environment and actually understanding the client. Um, it's very, very important, something that I had to learn because there are times the deal that I want for my client may not be the deal that my client accepts. And that's very, very difficult. I know what it should be, but you have a client for various reasons, whether they want the money, they want the opportunity, or whatever reason they want to move forward with the deal. And you do have to find the balance of, okay, let me make sure that my client understands what this deal is. Let me talk to my client about the pros and cons, what should or should not be here. Make sure to the extent that I can that my client understands what this is so when he or she is saying, let's move forward, um, that I've done my job to make sure that they're fully informed, even if it's not the deal that I think is the best deal for them. Um, sometimes the deal that I want for them is just not the deal that they will want to move forward with. And, you know, you, it'll be different from lawyer to lawyer. I tend to be sometimes a stickler on just, okay, I'll put that. Sometimes I'm just really just, I'm aggressive with my contracts. I really fight hard for my clients. Um, and sometimes that will wear your clients out. Sometimes my clients are like, Alicia, I know you're doing the best thing you can for me. I understand what you're saying. And that's when you say, OK, you're ready to move forward with this, but understand what you're signing on to. Um, just when I'm that's looking out. That's what you like to argue. Yeah, yeah, I really, you know, I'm aggressive. I'm straightforward. And I really Yeah. <laughs> 